Hey there, this is Coach Troy with Tate Fitness, and today I want to talk about the differences between DHEA, 4-DHEA, and 19-NOR-DHEA. Okay, so let's first start with DHEA. What is DHEA? It's an endogenous steroid hormone precursor. So not only does DHEA have its affinity to the androgen receptors, it also binds to the estrogen receptors, uh, estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. It doesn't bind to progesterone or the mineral or glucocorticoid receptors. A bioidentical hormone already secreted through the body's endogenous endocrine system. So basically, you know, it starts from the hypothalamus releasing corticotropin releasing hormone signaled down to the hypothesial portal to the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, which then signals to your adrenal glands or the cortex of the adrenal glands, the outside of the adrenal glands, to signal for uh, hormones or steroid hormones such as cortisol, aldosterone, and androgens. And one of those androgens have to be DHEA. Now, 4-DHEA is actually an isomer of 5 dehydroepiandrosterone. So unlike normal DHEA, 4-DHEA has a higher binding affinity to the androgen receptors and acts with ER or estrogen receptors in a different fashion um, to where it converts to a higher AR receptor activation. It doesn't uh, interact with the ER receptors the same way that normal DHEA does. And then last but not least, uh, 19 nor DHEA, it's an S-strain steroid. It's a combination of DHEA, anabolic androgenic steroid, nondrone. This combination makes it chemically known as a prohormone. So kind of similar to 4-DHEA, 19-NOR-DHEA, with that combo of nondrone making it a prohormone, it's not fully elucidated either about the continuances of what it can do as far as the androgen activity versus deleterious issues of androgenic side effects.